I, I was not planning on doing a cold open, but maybe we were. I don't know. Um, I don't. Well, it sounds anyway. like the the whole beginning was effed up. As well as. You know what? That beginning was effed up, Pat. And um, uh, you know the f word. I was telling this to my ju- sophomore juniors or sophomores. I can't remember which one. The f word, according to the Oxford English Dictionary, the the big the big daddy. This 32 volumes long, if you actually see it in a hard copy, has been around for so long. Because because if you don't know the OED, not for, not you, Pat. I know you know this, but the people that are listening to this don't know. the The OED is the the dictionary that tries to get all of the English words from all time into it. That just to clarify, that is the Oxford English Dictionaries. For yeah, the OED those who, right. who are not uh, aware of what the acronym is. Right. So, sorry, the Oxford English Dictionary. There it's you go. Super, there you super go. fat. And I think I just said dictionary, but so the dictionary, and it um, it attempts to like get the etymology, which is the word history of yep. every word in the English language. So it goes back as far as you can go back. It is the dictionary. If you look up the f bomb, it goes. It, it 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 literally gives up. And there's there's a line that says that this word has been in our language for so long that the scholars are not sure where it came from. It might be related to this, this, or this, like these Greek words or something, but it has always been a vulgar word. Well, that's fair. Although in fairness, uh, it doesn't have to be vulgar. I think that it could, depending on the tone and the context, um, you know, I, okay. I feel like our, our, I think, I just think contemporary American society has, has found a way to, not not so much, well, I guess, minimize or mute the severity of it. I'm not saying that people should be using it left and right, but I will say that it's, I hear it in the hallways all the time. Well, right, but we're and not using it right now and we're grown men. That's true. Well, yeah, well, in, well, but I, I have a birthday tomorrow, so maybe it's my age. Happy you know, birthday. The, the, Happy the big F, F birthday. 45. Um, Ooh, double F. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I hadn't thought about that. Oh yeah, it's oh man, it's it's double F, F is what birthday. it is. Got it. Could I sound more dirty by saying F squared? Good lord. Um, yeah, well, <laughs> and then I mean, the past couple of months have been incredibly um, effed up on my end. Um, yeah, you and I've oh, gone back God. and forth. Uh, we've been out. The show's been out for a little while, and um, uh, there have been some things in my life that have gone on that. Uh, and I'll keep this brief because I do want to actually get to the show. Um, and it occurs to me what happened to Sam Altman this past Friday is pretty effed up. And right. everyone's trying to make sense of that. Uh, I think that's worth uh, discussing. But uh, real briefly, and and I'll try to keep this brief. Um, and, and quite frankly, I don't even know what I'm going to say. Uh, 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 but um, the, the past couple of months have been pretty difficult for me, have been incredibly difficult. Yeah. Um, and um, a, a big reason for that is... Um, my my wife actually had passed away on October fifth, and um, she'd been uh, battling uh, stage four cancer for uh, knowingly uh, for for over three years. Mm-hmm. And so, um, for those of us or those of our, in our audience are wondering, you know, when's the next episode going to drop? Well, this is it. So sorry, um, yeah. it's just life. You know, life does what it does, and um, it's been uh, quite a road. Um, and uh, trying to find ways to cope and manage uh, has been very difficult. Although I will say that my my family and my my friends and my coworkers have been nothing short of extraordinary. And um, I, I can't. There, there's no way that I can possibly thank them enough. You know, it's just uh, there are so many emotions that come with this, and it really kind of merits its own. Um, episode of sorts, I suppose, but not in this context. It doesn't make sense because we're all about AI. But I I I wanted to um address it partly because um it's just it's just been such a a, an enormous um blow um to my family and to just life. And uh I'm trying to find ways to um to as they say kind of you know carry on. Um and so uh you know there are a variety of things that, that I'm doing, which are, which are helping. Uh, but, uh, but certainly the, you know, the, the support from people like you, Mike, um, and other coworkers and friends and family and, so, and such, um, has been, uh, really remarkable. Um, and, uh, I, th- there's really no segue. There's no 
like well, appropriate transition to make. I, I, mean, I think I can okay. transition you. Um, it's been effed up. It has been totally effed up, and um, this is the effed up show. Um, welcome to the show. This is the Bot Brothers AI for Educators. I'm Mike Pearson, and I'm Pat Burns. And this is the effed up show. <laughs> the bot. bot um, let me bring some levity to the F word. Please we're do. Still talking about Please the do. F-word. Levity's good. Humor's so, good. As, as you know, Matt, <laughs> I've got two crazy, almost six-year-old identical twin girls that are super funny, and they're now in kindergarten. And uh, about a week ago, um, I think it was it was Air. She goes, "Daddy, what what what's the F word?" Oh no. Yeah, she does. She said it. She goes. She didn't say the word. She said, "What's the F word?" And I was like, "Hmm." And I go, you know what? I'm just going to tell her. Um, and so I go, well, the, so the F word. Did you, did you break out the OED? And you said, well, I did. Hey, honey, let's take a look. <laughs> no, I didn't. But I was like, it's a word, right? And so yeah. I go, so I told yeah. her, I go, it's, you know, and I said it. And so then she's trying to say it. And she's saying, fa, 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 the, the, oh, the fa. Boy. And I'm like, what well, rhymes with duck? <laughs> and she's like, she's like, fa, fa. You know, and I mean, not not that she can't say words, but she right. was like trying to you right. know cognitively put it together. So then, then, then she's like, "Well, what are other bad words?" Oh no! You're opening so Pandora's I'm, I'm like, box well, over there. You know, so I'm trying to explain every every word for like you know the s word. What's the s word? And tell her that one for for yeah. poo, and then and then we do damn, which I think I can say on a podcast and not have to click the little explicit lyric thing that that you have to click. Um, and then, and then she's like, so the dam at the lake is a bad word. I've explained, you know, the whole thing. And so for the past week, week and a half, occasionally it's like, what's the F word? How do you say it? And then like yelling across the house and I have to correct their language. So they pronounce it um, correctly. And then we have to talk about how you um, don't use these words. And then that's a great language discussion because like, well, why, why can't we use these words? Mm-hmm. Right. Been talking well, about it's that a it's lot. interesting. I mean, there's so many things, words, and even just subjects, right? Uh, that we just don't. They're taboo. Um, right. I certainly found that in my life uh, recently. Um, but I'm finding that the more you talk about them, the less power they have, so to speak. And right. um, and and yeah. I think it's really important that. Um, yeah, you know, I I definitely want to talk about AI stuff. I don't want to keep coming, bring it back to to my personal stuff. But um, you know, I, just the more that people can talk. Um, and, and, and try to work through things, the better, um, you know, and it certainly is the case with, with AI stuff. I know we've talked about this in the past and that's really what we're all about is like, just let's have these conversations. Let's right. try to kind of go to those places that maybe are tough and difficult, but so essential. Um, cause at the end of the day, we're, we're all just humans trying to figure things out and we all make mistakes. We all try to, but well, I'm not gonna say we all try to do the right thing, but I know that you and I try to do the right thing. And um, you know, we're not always going to get things right, but we're, we're trying to kind of make sense of things and, um, yeah. And, and, and uh, yeah, so, so, uh, all this is, all that is to say is that, um, I don't know. I think that that's, that's actually, I, I find it strange. I'm going to say this to you, Mike, because <laughs> I don't know if I would have said it about five minutes ago, but I think in regards to your girls, maybe that's admirable in a way to kind of try to have those conversations. I guess it's like, I mean, well, they brought it up. So you might as well try to just say, well, here's what it is and try not to make it um, more powerful than what society tends to try to make yeah. it. And, um, you know, maybe there's something to that. Our listeners might disagree with me on that. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Maybe I'm going to get some sort of weird email. Um, yeah. I don't know. I, I'll, I'll read it, though. I'll take it into consideration. But, you know, it, I, I teach English. So words are words. There's context for them. You yeah, know, you said true. something um, many podcast eons ago, Pat. I can't remember which show it was on, but you just talked about like life is chaos and we're all just trying to manage through. Mm-hmm. So life is chaos or, or or life is like messy or life is well, uh, there's like the chaos and the order. Right. right. It's 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 I mean, there's there's chaos and there's there's a sense of order. We try to put order to things and those orders are get blown up. And I mean, think about civilizations, think about um, you know, our, our chores around our house. I mean, from from that you know, that kind of wide of a spectrum. Uh, you know, there, there's always just kind of this push and pull going on, and, and uh, entropy, right? Everything's always going yeah, into it's, chaos, it's just, and you're always yeah, trying to like constant. patch stuff up, and yeah, and and, and that's go. just kind of the deal. And it's, I mean, I don't know if that's solace or if that freaks people out. For me, it, it gives me a little bit of solace in just knowing that, like, okay, here's the ride. Here we go. All right, here we go again. And it's just you, you got to figure out how to kind of navigate that and build resilience, and um, and just kind of persist and move on. And 
uh, not, not necessarily move on, but kind of carry on is a better way to put it um, uh, in, in, in whatever we do. Um, I, you know, I th- and think about like all the things that are happening in October from, you know, Israel and Hamas to uh, there was the main shooting. I mean, there were, there were a lot of pretty tragic things happening in October. Mm-hmm. And, um it just didn't seem like it was letting up, but I know that a lot of this stuff is still kind of move or you know happening. Obviously, uh, the war in there's Israel the, and Hamas, but there's the newsroom tragedies, and then there's the the, uh, the exponentially huge amount of like personal tragedies mm-hmm. that are never mm-hmm. reported. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, not and to, that's not to been... denigrate the newsroom ones. I'm just saying, no, like, but there's it, a lot it, of yeah. When I think we're, our our exposure, you know, and actually in in a roundabout way, I think that or not even roundabout, I think direct way, that AI is kind of force it, it's kind of bringing to the forefront something that I think we've always known, which is that you know the internet of itself is exposing everybody, all of humanity to so much news that we get. I think we we get overloaded and overwhelmed, and it's 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 um, I think creates a lot of mental health issues. I think that AI probably exacerbates that sort of thing or can or has a propensity to or capacity to. Um, that doesn't mean that we, you know, toss it out, you know, um, but uh, but we have to figure out how to kind of manage it in a way that's, I guess, responsible and or at least um, good for our own psyches. And and I think that that's a really, really tall order for our, for this, for, for where we are in human history. I don't, I don't know how you do that, but I think it's, it's a, uh, something that's that's something essential that we start having those conversations well, trying to kind of figure it all out if for people who have been listening to this show first thank you for listening to our show and thank you for listening to this one and thank you for like coming back after a long hiatus um i, I think so a theme that has come up again and again and again and again is, is how fast the ai stuff just keeps moving mm-hmm. like every time you look there is um something something new and you, and you feel like you get your feet under you and then you don't and there, mm-hmm. there was someone on the Twitters that posted something about um, doing a presentation. And then like after doing the presentation, whatever they just said was out of date because something <laughs> came out. And, yeah. Uh, if you, a little segue, Pat, um, this happened about a week ago. Um, OpenAI, um, ChatGPT released something called GPTs, which mm-hmm. seems redundant, right? Like, like for personal use. Well, in fairness... OpenAI is not particularly great at naming things. I mean, chat no, GPT, just you trip over it. I, I can't tell you how many times, you know, I've tried to say it and I'm stumbling. I'm like, oh, it's just not phonetically easy to say. Right. Either, either it's February or Wednesday, yeah. Wednesday, but we have Was them. it? Oh, either it's February or Wednesday, Wednesday <laughs> but we have them. Maybe those words were actually pronounced that way at one point and, and somebody just butchered them and it just oh, became. Uh, there's a whole history to that too, I can inform you. I probably. Um, but well, anyhow, so sorry. so you're talking about these chat GPT or these GPTs that you can GPTs. make off a of chat GPT. What are they? How do they work? How do you make All right, them? You want to see one? Yeah. 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 Okay. So here, here's the thing. If you're listening, like in order to have access to this, of course, you have to have the paid open AI account. You have to have chat GPT four. And they and they did a bunch of upgrades with it, but this is like the most astounding one. And Pat, I'm gonna show, I'm gonna share. Okay. I was I was building one for um our high school. Um well, okay. for my, I mean, it's a personal one, so you can't do anything with them yet. Um, so let me, let me try to figure out how to screen share here. Okay. Um, so, and then we'll kind of narrate what you're going to see here. Okay. Um, so when you open up chat GPT, like if you had GPT-4, GPT-3, you had a choice between the two, right? And and now it just kind of defaults to whatever one, one you have. So I have four. And so just real quick, GPT-4 now has Dolly browsing and like uh, analysis all built in or all baked into it. You still like have to click on code interpreter or code uh, or click on browsing. Now, as soon as you type, if it, if it, if you ask it for an image, it will just go to Dolly and create one. So that's pretty cool. And then code interpreter, you can upload spreadsheets and stuff and have it, have it do like data analysis. That's already on there. It still has its plugins. Um, well, so real quickly, Mike, just to be clear. So like the the GPTs that you're about ready to talk about, like you can only create them if you have chat GPT four, isn't that correct? Right. Right. Okay. So so yeah, you, and you can so only that, share oh, so you, you can share them, but it. you have to be running a chat GPT four account. Okay. So really the I guess anything that we're talking about from here on out really doesn't apply for like in our situation, our students can use chat GPT three, right. but it's only three point five. 
And anybody who's not paying for it, it, it this actually, you, you just don't have access to it. You'd have to pay for it. So that's right. I mean, one way they're trying to monetize it, um, to try right. to get more people into their, into their, uh, I guess, yeah, into their, yeah. their pocket, their money. Your so money they're, they're pockets, either yeah. trying to get people to come, to come and sign up for four, or I suspect, um, so these GPTs are already available for enterprise licenses, which is like if you're a big corporation and you're using their product. Mm -hmm. So if you're a corporation, you can build your own like personal, like whatever GPT, which I'll explain in a second and, and use it. And every, everyone in your corporation can, I'm going to assume that's going to come to whenever schools get access to enterprise license. I, I haven't heard that we have yet. I know that our district last I talked to them, with them they were like, they were trying to get them to call us back. They won't call us back. Mm. Um, Probably because they're a startup that you know is is is, is grown exponentially. Well, they're inundated, I'm sure. Right, which is why it breaks all the time. Um, but anyway, um, so so once the enterprise license comes for schools, I would assume that then students would have access, or teachers would. And so so here's the cool part: if for if, if you're a teacher, or if you're in your job, is that once you learn how to make one you could you can like basically share it just like a google doc like it's just like a share link and you just share it with the person and then when they they click on your gpt it opens up in um in chat gpt and it, it's just like a little like mini automated uh chat gpt that you've already programmed like you've already you've already kind of like baked in the prompt so it only does whatever you it only does what you want it to do so it's kind of like auto GPT. Remember that from like years, like a year ago, or the, no, it wasn't a year ago. It was ago. like it was, it was, it was, it was back, it was back like March, April, March, April around there. Yeah, I was looking for, oh yeah, it was uh, episode five in April, April 19th. There we talked go. about yep. auto GPT. And so they've kind of like done that, right? Um, so anyway, so let me show you, let, let, let me show you first, like, um, like one I made. I, I just call it school secretary, Sam. Okay. Right. And so I'm clicking on it. And it should pull up on your screen, right? So um, what I did with this, well, let me show you kind of how you, how you configure it, right? So when you first, so when, when you first like kind of like, like open it up, it has a name, School Secretary Sam, it has an image created by Dolly. It just kind of makes one. Okay. And, and, and then like it has your name, whoever built it, whoever's on the paid account. And you get like the four like little starter like phrases and then you can message School Secretary Sam. And then what I did for this is that I uploaded our student, um, what's it called? Like the, like the manual, the handbook, the student handbook. Yeah. The policy and, student. And handbook. I gave it links for just for our high school. And I gave it a link just for like the parent link for policy stuff. Okay. So like if you, if you, if you go to secretary Sam and you say like, what is the uh, attendance policy? Okay. Right. It takes it a minute because it has to search through stuff. Um, it shouldn't be doing research of thing. Yep. Right. So, it, so just use Bing, rather right? Than, and and I the, see that it's actually going straight to our school's website. Right. Um, and so I, so I told it to, to only down. use our website before it was like pulling up some school in Florida for some weird reason. Okay. So it just said searching my knowledge, and then there it is. Right. Okay. So so then basically so so this particular GPT is creating. So you, you're essentially creating. And understandably, you're calling it school secretary, Sam, as if it's like it's like a it's like an AI school secretary that can give you answers. So you don't necessarily have to call the actual secretary. Right. And then um, they let, and you can just type number. in what I need to know and it'll spit it out back at you. Um and it and it does give you a phone number. Interesting. Um is that phone number accurate? Uh I, well, I think it's got a hyperlink, right? So if I click the hyperlink, it brings us to yeah. oh, wow. the it website. The website. Okay. Right to the website. Right. Yeah. So the, is so, that number? Uh, what was the number? Burr. Oh, I wonder what number it was. Well, it's you'd have to go back to the. Yeah. Sorry, I'm scrolling fast, aren't I? You're oh, going my really fast. Running low. Too. Oh, yeah, what you're doing? <laughs> yeah, you're just bouncing around. I know it's been. Yeah. You could do Control F, Mike. Oh, <laughs> what's the number though? Been the number. <laughs> I don't know what was the number. Well, you have to go back to the tab. <laughs> it's okay. it's late here, isn't it? It is late, right? Oh my god! Nor we normally record in the afternoon, and it's uh, we're doing a it, yeah. That was North. It was North's phone number. Yeah, so it was actually the correct number. Um, yeah. Wow, that's fascinating. And it's giving and it's reading out for our listeners. It, it's reading out like uh, reporting absences, excused absences, unreported absences, late arrivals, unexcused absences, excessive absences. Like basically all these different um, 
parameters for all those different, uh, I guess, absent, uh, I guess, situations or absentee situations. So it kind of spells it out for you. So if a parent wants to know, boom, they get it and they don't have to bother jumping on the phone and having that kind of run around trying to figure out what the answer is. You just, boom, it's, it's there. So it's, so it's efficient. Um, it's easy. It does give you a phone number if you need it, but if that's all, if that's all you need to know was the tenant's policy, you've got it right there for you and it saves you the hassle. And also in fairness, it also kind of saves the school, the, the time that they need to try to figure that out for you or answer it for you, which would, you know, the, the person at the front desk may know that, um, but they, they wouldn't know it to this level of detail right off the bat. They'd have to look it up and probably read it back to you. So this is actually a much easier way to approach right. things. Now, what you just did is you, looks like you asked about our academic honesty policy. So it's going mm -hmm. through uh, kind of responsibilities, violations, consequences, that sort of thing, and just spells it out for it for, for you. So if you're a parent or a student, you want to know, you can just look it up. It didn't take long. So this is a nice assistant. It's an AI assistant, but for school related issues, uh, which right. is pretty brilliant. So like any school could do that. Yeah. And then, and then what, what's coming is, is that when you're an enterprise, like you can actually like kind of upload all of your documents. Okay. I, I, I only just linked, like, I didn't, I didn't scrape all of our high school's pages. I just said, here's one, here's one, just to see how it works. Well, and that one's public. And I also wasn't so. sure if the district would appreciate if I scraped their entire website and dumped it in, into, even though it's public, I don't want to do that. Um, right. But they, but they would be smart to start thinking about that in those terms to figure out, well, how do we leverage it? Cause I know that they are trying to be progressive or proactive about that. It's like, well, this is about as cutting edge as you're going to get. Right. Um, and then, so do you remember, do you remember critical AI and Dr. Goodlad and that episode? She, uh, well, what specifically about it? Well, she made a good point or maybe it's on her, on her Twitters, but she made a good point that like the, the amount of resources just to do this one search about, mm -hmm. about attendance policy, like it, it would be, it's much more uh, resource, uh, less intensive to mm -hmm. just go, go to Google, right. Or, or to Bing and say, what is the Naperville Norris academic policy or go to the website, right. Um, so I just wanted to throw that out there too, is like, this is like resource intensive where this, it, so the, the bot just searched the stuff that's like publicly available anyway, but you didn't have to click around. You can just type in the question, which honestly, since with chat GPT four, you can talk into your phone, right? Mm -hmm. You could just like hit the little mic icon and say, what's the tenants policy. And it would, and while you're doing something else, it's going to bring it up for you. And then I think probably read it. I think that's starting to happen too. Well, you know, it's interesting. It occurs to me that that schools probably would be wise to make sure, especially deans and other admin, that they absolutely know what the policy is in the event that the AI spits out something inaccurately. <laughs> happens. Does AI spit out inaccurate things? Right. So it would just be because it could, I'm imagining a situation where there's a school somewhere. It, I bet it'll be reported in the next five years somewhere. Oh, oh yeah. Sound like an onion piece somebody's parroting what, what Chad GPT spat back and, and it sounds authoritative, understandably so. But and then the school's like, oh, and then the parent says, well, look, here's my screenshot. And the, and the dean says, oh, okay, I guess that's what, that's what it is. And if the dean doesn't know better or if they're new, and they just right. didn't read up on it. And they're just not, they don't have the information locked down. Like you could end up issuing out a consequence that's inaccurate or, or, right. unfair or otherwise not actually the policy. So you have to, I mean, you still have to, I think it always comes back to, we've talked about this before where how you still have to know your content. You know, if you're a teacher in the classroom, you still have to know what transcendentalism is. You can't just assume right. that it's going to kick out, you know, text that align with transcendentalism. It might give you something faulty, you know? Well, um, you know, what's interesting is, before you'd be like the, the, the student or parent might be like, well, this is what your website said. And, it, and, 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 and if the website was inaccurate, you'd be like, oh, that needs to be updated. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but, but now it'd be like, well, this is what, this is what your school secretary, Sam said. And you'd have to be like, well, you know, AI sometimes doesn't work. <laughs> well, and I think that's where you'd have to, it, I think that that's where there's a whole kind of cultural, um, I guess, education that you have to do. So if you're a school, it would seem to me that you'd have to understand the technology well enough to, 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 uh, to tell parents and to students that enough so that messaging gets through. And I, and I don't think that that's that big of a deal. I think within the year, that shouldn't be too much as long as people make a concerted effort to explain that you can't always believe it. Like we, that's something that we've talked about in our classes when we had our district had us make training or right, a training module. Right. And we had to be very clear and upfront and just say, look, you can't always assume that it's accurate. And it's something that I, I try to always remind the students of, um, 
And, and, and I think that eventually that it just become kind of like a, well, you know, that it just can't, it can't, it's not always spitting out proper information. So you have right. to always double check it. Um, yeah. I, the yeah. other, and the other problem with a school secretary program like this is that that would mean that every parent would have to have chat GPT four. Oh, fair enough. Well, and in some, some communities, many will, but yeah, some won't, um, some won't. Enough. So then you can't, this can't yeah. be your entire thing. Right. In other words, just, it might be, but if it's mind. accurate and you know, it's accurate, it might be a great way for someone you know, in the school to look something up. And, and, and this was just a, an easy example. There might be, yeah. there might be stuff that you do as an administrator, that stuff you need to refer to that you could, you could have it do. And, um, uh, well, so, so is the, the, the idea though, with these GPTs is that you can kind of devise them for a whole slew of different sorts of um, purposes, right? That they can essentially become assistants in a whole variety of different ways. Uh, so how, how can it help you? I, I guess I'm trying to think through as an educator, what are the different ways other than a secretary assistant? Might it be like, oh, what are the different things you could create with it? And that's what I'm not sure of. Cause I, 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 I maybe it's cause it's late. Um, but I mean, would it be something that you could create GPT for grading? Could you use GPT stuff for your own probably for your own class information, I suppose. Um, uh -huh. You know, like kind of make your own TA type of thing. Um, that could be interesting. Uh, I got one for you. Anything else um, that came, came to mind? Because you had a bunch of them that you were playing with around with, I thought. Yeah, I've got some that I'm kind of waiting to, because there's supposed to be a store to launch out to, to help some teachers. Um, but, 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 uh, I can get it to pull up. All right. So I, I, I've been like, I, you know, we, we both teach AP Lang and I was like, man, you know, sometimes a kid just needs like, like some examples and stuff. Right. Um, and so, uh, and, and so I was like, you know, and there's a couple of kids. I was like, I could just write you, write you a really good chat GPT prompt and it could kind of tutor you, um, for, you know, doing like a rhetorical analysis essay. Right. So, mm -hmm. So here's here's the one I, I wrote. It's called Rhetorica, um, which is the name that Chat GPT came up with. And then I just called it AP Lang Rhetorical Analysis Tutor. And it's it's specifically built to need help with evidence and commentary. Like if you're familiar with AP Lang, there's kids kind of struggle with that category on, on the rubric. So anyway, so so you can program these buttons down here, like like the ones that are usually like the, the starter buttons, right? And so it says, can you provide an example? I don't have an essay. How does mm -hmm. word choice persuade or an audience, you know, contrast, mm -hmm. like stuff I talk about in class. So sure. I can kind of like, kind of like um, multiply me, right. Kind of, kind of like you can do the same thing with Eric Keen's my essay feedback. Like you can, mm -hmm. you can give students your, the feedback that you would have given them by programming um, his system. Um, if, if the audience is not familiar with a writing teacher, you should check out my essay feedback by Eric Keen. Anyway, let's say you're a student, you don't have an example, right. You click the button. And rhetorica, the chat, the chat GPT thing says, great, I'm going to, I'm going to write a draft speech for you. Mm -hmm. Right. And so it does, it gives you speaker location audience, mm -hmm. right? Cause that's what, that's what you need for the AP Lang. So it's got uh, a soapstone and give me a soapstone kind of, or part of yeah. soapstone. Right. And it writes a speech and then it does an analysis of the speech. So a kid of kids, like I have no idea what's going on. It turns around and writes an analysis and then it explains its analysis. Right. Here's why I chose the things in, in the speech. Right. Mm -hmm. And then it says, would you like to see another example, ba example based on a specific theme or, or topic of your choice? Right. So another, you want another speech. Right. Basically. Or you mm -hmm. could ask it to reanalyze it. Right. So that, that's what that's what rhetorica does is it, it just it will just keep on doing this and keep on showing kids. Right. Like how like what, what does a rhetorical analysis look like? Right. Or if they have their own essay, they can they can they can drop that in there and get some advice. Right. Which. The problem with doing that with chat GPT as students are discovering is that sometimes it just gives like general advice. Okay. Mm -hmm. so there's that one. There is one call called, called an AP diction detective because a lot, a lot of stuff is like, you know, how words are utilized for persuasion and emphasis. Right. So same type of thing. Please create a text and explain it. And then it does great. And it just does a paragraph and it tells yeah. the type of text. It says descriptive paragraph. The theme is the beauty and tranquility of nature. The speakers and nature and audience or enthusiasts and the audience's general readers who appreciate nature. And then it creates an example paragraph, right? So if you don't know in the audience, diction is just word choice. So how do words emphasize stuff? And then it gives a table for of words, connotation, 
right? Here's the here's all these words that have uh, positive connotations, evoking a sense of beauty, tranquility, and harmony. It gives lush, serene, melodiously, symphony, emerald, gentle. And these are all words from the paragraph it wrote. wrote. It does. It picks up on wordplay and then like uh, what, what 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 some writers call image patterns. Okay. And then it writes a, a claim sentence and, and it writes an analytical paragraph supporting like how the, the word choice um, would support the claim. And so, so what, what I'm, so what I'm quickly, working on, go ahead. The, the, the strategy table thing, like, so there's all these different words. Can you scroll back up for a second? Yeah. Um, where it says there's the strategies table and you've got your word phrases. Are you... Maybe I misunderstood. Is, is so there's a descriptive paragraph, but are the descriptive words like you? you those are things you could identify in your, in the rhetorical analysis, or is it something else? So 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 it gives you like an example paragraph, right? Yeah, and then um, so it the 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 this little bot, this little GPT, is going to solely focus on the word choice, okay? okay. And because like oftentimes in, in an essay, kids have to explain like the tone or meaning, right? Or how an emotion is, is created. And oftentimes it's like descriptive writing, okay? So the strategies table is like, here, here is all these words who have the connotations that are, that are positive, that have like connotation of beauty, tranquility, or harmony, right? And so the words in this paragraph would be like lush, serene, symphony, mm -hmm. emerald, gentle, sweet. So the same thing a kid would do of annotating, like these words go together, right? They'd annotate those in green or something, mm -hmm. right? And then and then uh, patterns, it, it pulls up azure sky, emerald canopy, golden orb. Um, so what does it say? The explanation says, these phrases use color adjectives to create a vivid and colorful imagery of the forest, mm -hmm. enhancing the theme of nature's beauty. Mm -hmm. Probably need to re reprogram it a little bit. And so that this table is like words from the example text. And then like, here's all the words that go together. Does that make more sense, Pat? Yeah, it does. It does. Um, okay. I guess what I'm, I'm looking at that table, trying to think of like how, like what would next step be? Would it be like, or, or like what could be a next step? Not necessarily, not necessarily what it would be, because you could take it to different directions, but I'm thinking about how like the explanation um well, or rather that the, the strat you identify that what the strategy is and how it's working through the words and phrases and then explanation is kind of that why part. So you can actually string that together and say, well, take, yeah. say, the patterns and talk about how the patterns work, uh, write it in a paragraph form, and that would give you your, your body paragraph. Right. And then that's, that's the next part it does is that there's the claim sentence and it says, in this descriptive paragraph, the speaker emphasizes the beauty and tranquility of nature. Through mm -hmm. evocative and colorful diction, to inspire the reader to appreciate, connect with the natural world, and mm -hmm. then it and then it pulls those same words from that table: lush, mm -hmm. serene, emerald, mm -hmm. right. Well, it's even that, that although a student may not necessarily be able to to do that on their own initially, at least seeing how it how it can how you can kind of deconstruct it and make it and and kind of do it, you might be able to reformulate a little bit and at least be, give you some sort of direction. Uh, I can see that actually being quite helpful, uh, especially if you get some more repetition with it over time, or mm -hmm. even having students say, "Hey, like over the weekend, I want you to to do one of these, um, you know, have it create a speech and then have it run through this, and and you know, take some time trying to figure out if you can develop a paragraph based off of what it spits out, and and then reflect on it or something like that, and th and that gives you some more just right. practice and yep, um, and and to that point, you can kind of have it individualized as well. It would seem to me. Right, exactly. Like, and and so, so I was seeing these things as tutors. Once we can give them to students, mm -hmm. and and that it, it, if it was, if a kid wanted to, they could be like, I just need to see this a few times, and I need to read mm -hmm. um, some examples. Like, like I'll do. I've been doing it in class for years, where I, I'll just take student paragraphs, right, mm -hmm. and just make copies of them. And this this is like infinite copies, and and they're okay. They're not like you know super high end. Um, the other cool thing, Pat, was that with my sophomores, I used this just to quickly generate a paragraph to mm -hmm. use with them to talk about word choice. And it was like, so it was just mm -hmm. like a paragraph generator mm -hmm. for me. And and it will do it'll do a different, like different type paragraph every time. Yeah. Yeah. So there's yeah. that one. There's one called Maggie Magpie, text set curator, right? And so it does text sets and um, but let me show you like how to make one of these. Okay. Yeah, well, so real quick, the Maggie Magpie, is that a name you came up with or did, it, did the AI come up with it for you? I, I played with the AI a little bit and then I didn't like what it did, but it gave me some ideas. And, that, you know, magpies are, you know, a, a bird that collects a bunch of stuff to build a nest, right? Oh, okay. So, 
No, I took, I took that. I, and and it, it likes to do alliteration. Yeah. But no, it's like, let me show you, like, so if you go over to the left frame and click on explore, it says create a GPT. Okay. okay. And so you click on it, it gives you this super easy screen. It's two frames. There's like the right side of the preview yep. scene, screen and the left side where it says GPT builder, right? Yeah. What would you like to make? And so Pat, what would you like to make? Oh Lord, you put me on the spot. I would like to make uh, an apple pie. No, <laughs> it can't do that though, can it? How about um, some sort of like, you like to travel, right? Yeah, no, I love, yeah, I love travel. How about this? Um, I've recently learned that I have more Danish heritage than I thought. That's right. Um, and so I was looking up stuff on Copenhagen and I'm fascinated uh, about it. So um, what if there was like, could you do like a chat or like a G, create a G, GPT on how to like, I guess, best travel in Denmark slash Copenhagen? Or is that not quite? Yeah, whatever? sure. Sure. Right. So like, um, like a travel companion or a travel, oh, a tour guide. There we go. Like a tour guide for Copenhagen. That's what I like to see. That'd be cool. Copenhagen. Yes, Copenhagen. Sorry. For Copenhagen. A tour guide for Copenhagen. Well, so that's well, my you know thought. what I got a kick out of. So so a uh, number of years ago, uh, this is pre-pandemic. I was there's this great series on uh, Netflix called Abstract. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, great. Yeah, and I think it's two seasons. I don't I don't think they did a third, but um, <clears throat> in the first season, I mean, they, they spotlight all these really great designers. And one of them they they spotlight is this guy uh, Bjarke Ingels, who's from Copenhagen actually, and he's uh, his one of his headquarters. He's an architect, and he's uh, he's got a headquarters there in New York City. And and the work that he does is just bonkers, and it's so cool. Like one of the things he created like this factory in Copenhagen that has um, it has a ski slope on it. And so you can actually like, <laughs> ski this thing Very cool. both during like the warmer months. And it's like this like green kind of like astroturfy type thing. And then I think in the wintertime, they might have snow or something. Um, or at least the pictures look like it snow. Uh, but it's also emitting like it's, it's, it's like a working factory. And it, and it feels like it's got like a park space to it. It's just on the roof. It's Very nuts. Cool. And you're like, this guy's amazing. And I'm like, God, I want to go to that city. Like, you know, so it was kind of neat that like I, I was kind of gravitating towards that city without realizing i actually had well, let's see what the tour guide it. does right let's see what we can do so so um, you just said uh, a tour guide for copenhagen is all you put in to the search yep. bar and that's so it in, in the gpt builder all i put is a, a tour guide for for coping <laughs> I, I i pronounce it copenhagen because i'm in illinois and in, in, in the united states and i'm pretty sure it's copenhagen thank you mean there's Il probably someone in there's probably someone in Copenhagen laughing at both pronunciations and just saying yeah, you guys no. are idiots. So sorry, Copenhagen Hagen. All right. So I just I just basically told it to build it, right? So there's a little icon of like a little wrench, just turning a wrench. Right? While you're talking about this or while this thing is loading, I will say I'm also equally excited because Copenhagen is spotlighted or featured in uh the bear, which is uh, oh, right, right, a wonderful right. TV show. Um, and uh, Chicago, Chicago, and the culinary scene, and then the Copenhagen apparently has a, a remarkable culinary scene. They've had some of the best restaurants in the world there. I'm like, and I was looking up a couple of them. One, one's Noma, and the other one, oh shoot, what's the other one called? It just recently won, and like the price points are insane. <laughs> it's like, oh my god, right? Like I could never eat there. There was like, it was like they were like seven hundred dollar meals. I'm like, uh, but never mind. You could eat um, there once, and then that's your whole trip. Yeah, yeah, but but they looked super cool too. Um. So it's kind of like a linea here in Chicago. I was just like, I don't right. know, right, but like, I mean, that's like a, and that's a fraction of my paycheck. So yeah. um, you, you get to go once in your saying. life. Was it? You get to go once in your life. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be other thing. Yeah. And by yeah. fraction, I mean a substantial fraction, not like right. <laughs> one sixty fourth of it. I mean, it's like, just to be clear. <laughs> it's okay. We're teachers. We're poor. Yeah. Um, well, right, I, mean, so the G I wouldn't say poor, but you know, you know, okay. Um, so GP table, GPT builder responds, great. Your GPT will be will have behave as a knowledgeable and friendly tour guide for Copenhagen. Now let's give it a name. How about Copenhagen Explorer? That's lame. Lame. All right. So um give me a, a, a cool name that is alliterative. How about that? Give me how about just give me a cool name. Okay, that's fine too. What was it? it? Copenhagen, Copenhagen Explorer. Not 45. I'm using I'm using my Copenhagen Explorer app. Copenhagen Voyager. No, 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 no. How about this? How about something with bicycles in it? Because it's a big biking city. Can with... you do that? Oh, hang on something a Copenhagen. Name with uh bicycles in it. Okay. 
Copenhagen Voyager. <laughs> it's just as corny. <laughs> okay. Bicycle. Uh, something hip <laughs> and cool. All right. So lame. Copenhagen Bike Scout. That's okay. It's not great, but it's it's better. I mean, whatever. Just pick something. So you uh, pull in <laughs> something from the uh, bear. Oh, show. man. Now, now you're getting trendy. How about Bike Bear bike Explorer? Bear Explorer. Okay, oh, like that. The bike like that. Bear Explorer. Let's do that. I kind of, I, I do kind of wonder. Uh, I would imagine if you're from from Copenhagen that you are uh, tickled by the fact that that the Bears actually shot, shot some of the, the their show there. I, I know that as a Chicagoan, like we we love. I was so stoked because uh, I was watching it and uh, saw that they were uh, they had some scenes in a restaurant called Avec uh, that's in yeah. it's kind of near West Loop. Are kind of just adjacent to it, and uh, I remember watching that. Uh, I think you're hungry tonight. Oh, uh, yeah, I probably didn't eat enough dinner. But <laughs> in any event, so but they they had some scenes in there, and I remember my wife and I were watching at the time, and and we were just like, oh my god, we were there. And then there was like the owner was in it. We're like, what? And so it was just it was just such a cool special thing. And and the bear. So the thing that I think, and this is where my bias comes out, but like it, it it's like a love letter to the city of Chicago. And just all the references, they they did such a deep dive into understanding the city of Chicago in so many different sorts of ways. I kind of wonder if if people from Copenhagen felt that that the show did that city justice, even though it was a limited amount of time. Um, it'd be cool to hear, you know, to find out. Uh, I suspect that they did a pretty good job with it, but I don't. I mean, I don't know for sure. But uh, anyway, right. let's just pick a name so we can move on. Yeah, I thought you did it as I was rambling. Oh no, it's, no, I, I didn't. I was waiting for you oh, to okay. decide because. <laughs> <laughs> no. All right. So let's just so you've got like um what was that one you had? I thought it was the the bear bike cycling. Like, you want to do the bear bike scout? Bike bike bear explorer. Oh my yeah. gosh. Type Whatever. Of. All right. So so but but the point is basically you just plug in uh, something really quick and easy and it'll kick out uh or create the GPT for you really fast. It's not it's not more complicated than just typing what no. you want, essentially, right? right? Interesting. Okay. I mean, I the, didn't realize the, the it was more, that so if you're, if you're, so the, I think the, the more you've done like prompting chat GPT, if you, if you've done some really like intense prompts, and I know some, some people have, Ooh, there's um, the image. You can like modify it, like the image. That's a great image. No, that's, that's like, All it's right. got like their buildings and stuff in the back. That's perfect. Oh, wow. That's wild. Yeah. So Dolly just did that, just made a, a basically like a logo. Great image. Great. Hmm. Okay. Um, so anyway, if, if you're really good at doing prompts, like you can kind of modify stuff, but if you're not, this is super easy. Mm -hmm. And then on top of it, if you're not like, like this, so like if you like the AP Lang thing or the diction detective or Maggie magpie, like it'll just be in the app store and you can just, you can use it. Right. So for, for teachers that are like, or, or this, this is going to go for any, any job really like where, where you have to use the computer for people that you know don't want to spend their time programming the like the the GPT prompt, you're going to have these little personal GPTs that you can just like use, mm -hmm. and I think that's going to be the big benefit of it. All right, so so now it's saying let's refine the context. Uh, what specific type of information or assistance should it focus on providing about Copenhagen, Pat? Oh, Historical um, facts, food, biking routes, uh, or something else? Uh, oh God, those are all great. Uh, facts, food and biking routes and other. Maybe unique things to do or something like that. So food, biking. Yep. And and maybe um, I don't know, I don't know, unique. I don't know, Copenhagen -y things to do. Unique local. Local, yeah. There we go. Local like treasures. Oh, I like I like that. Yeah, I bet it says uh, Tivoli Gardens because that that kept popping up all over. And apparently, I learned this fun fact. Apparently, the Tivoli Gardens was inspiration for Disney World because uh, huh. it's the world's first theme park. I'm like, hmm, no I way. That. Yeah, I thought that was pretty wild. Um, okay, so now it's asking us, uh, we'll now provide specialized information on Danish cuisine, biking adventures, and hidden gems in the city. To mm -hmm. further personalize this, how do you envision this interaction style? Should it be more like a friendly local sharing personal favorites or like an expert guide with a wealth of historical knowledge? In other words, how do you want it to respond to you? Uh, let's go with the personal favorites because it's because uh, historical knowledge is all fine and well, but you can like Wikipedia that stuff. But local favorites okay. just sounds more fun. Okay, M more more common too, like stuff that people actually want to know. 
yeah so now you're kind of like programming the like the voice and response right and so it's updating again so so but it's, so, it's, it's so it's essentially just kind of like following up and prompting like and kind of guiding yeah. you as you go yep exactly and yeah. so for for people That's that aren't cool. listening so the right side preview has got a cool little icon with like a red bicycle and buildings in the back of it the name mm -hmm. copenhagen cool cyclist a friendly tour guide for copenhagen offering insights and travel tips yeah and then it has like four four starters like tell me like that before you can go to the prompt like mm -hmm. you could immediately prompt it uh, if you're using the the the, audio, the the gpt or you could like click on one of like the, the buttons so, like tell me I, about I'm the noticing, mermaid statue i'm noticing well there's two things so one so like all these things we're sharing these are things that mike is creating on the spot and so but it's only available under his gpt account meaning unless he shares it with somebody right i i, I can make it public but currently there's not a way to search that because they're they're going to do like an app store yeah right Wait, whoever knows how you get I, mean, I, I, I could put it on our website then... if someone wanted to play with it yeah I, yeah okay. i mean i could do that tomorrow at some point well so probably I, I, tomorrow I probably if know. i do it tomorrow it will be in the past for by the time i get this like edited and out well but <laughs> so, so but think about this for instance so wouldn't it make sense then for like a um uh, like a trip advisor for example to create them themselves and put them on their site so that like you yep. go to them rather than some random joe schmo that just happened randomly created. right or, or fedoras or rick is it not rick bass but the guy that's on pbs rick steves um, yeah rick steves rick yeah. bass is a writer um then it says one of the follow-up how should gpt approach clarifying questions should it ask for more details to provide or lean towards giving general recommendations wait what was the first part not general before general recommendations tailor advice yeah, we should want it ask for more details to provide tailored advice or yeah. lean towards giving general recommendations based on the information provided yeah tailored advice for sure tailored advice please um another neat little thing i'm noticing at the bottom uh on the right hand side where it's got the preview and it's got the four different prompts that you could ask if you wanted it to it says tell me about the little mermaid statue apparently uh, that was a Hans Christian Andersen story, I think. It is. Yeah, and I read that. From I didn't 10, realize it originated versions. there or something, or I think, um, which is great. That's actually my, that was my favorite Disney movie growing up. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. It must have been, Good it must story. have been in the blood somehow. Uh, the, the, the Hans Christian Andersen story, um, she, the, the little mermaid uh, is going to die because if she, oh, shit. And then, and then they, the, the her sisters bring her knives to kill the prince so because if he kills her she doesn't die and she refuses to and the the gods took pity and put her into the sky as stars mm. yep um all right so it says you're all set out to try copenhagen copenhagen cool mm -hmm. cyclist in the boy that's a hard name in the playground yeah. it's ready to share local in, insights on food biking uh please give it a try and let me know if there's anything else so then we go over to like to the preview side that looks just like chat gpt but with an icon mm -hmm. And, and what so we want what do you want to do you want to say recommend uh, let's just click give a us a cool, recommend oh, no no i got it, i got it, i got it. give us a okay. cool biking and food like route or something like that okay because wouldn't that let's be cool you could do like a little tour of copenhagen like on bike to cool little like food places that sounds sounds awesome oh, how long would you like to hike and bike and what's your comfort level of cycling um let's say uh for I don't know what three hours, and then uh, comfort is. I just make it a leisurely ride. Okay, types of food. Um, diet. It's asking for dietary restrictions. No preferences. Uh, none. <laughs> um, um, no preferences. Interest along the way. Would you like to see specific landmarks, parks? How about you suggest? So I was going to say, yeah, yeah, surprise us. Okay. Oh, surprise us. I like that better. Yeah. This has been great. so like, so what our audience doesn't know is that Mike and oh, I. Where, where do you start, want to start from? It says. Oh, start from um, the Little Mermaid statue. How about that? I have no idea. That's on the water, but yeah, it, I don't know cool. if that makes any sense to do so. But um, as this thing is kicking out, the response, uh, Mike and I have done bike trips for years. We haven't done one for a little while, but uh, we've, we've been West coast. We've been, um, all over the Midwest. All over the Midwest. Yeah. Um, we, and we've done our own individual bike trips as well, but, um, this would have been great because we've done Milwaukee a number of times and I love Milwaukee. Um, such a cool, <laughs> cool Milwaukee's city. great. Yeah. So, Chicago. so many cool things. 
but oh yeah but then Milwaukee to me has always been like it's like the little brother to Chicago it's like it's not as big it's but a cool little brother it's though. Still, yeah but it's still cool I like it uh and there's so many similarities it's just like it's it's crazy how many uh between architecture and street names and just the cuisine in many respects um yeah Milwaukee's wonderful I love that city but it would have been great to have something like this. It would have saved me a lot of time trying to plan stuff out or right. So I gave you a out. biking route. Mm-hmm. Start at the statue right along Langolini through. You should have picked a town where I can pronounce words through Oster. <laughs> You're welcome. On, on Log Park, past Rosenberg Castle through the botanical gardens, and there's descriptions uh-huh. down Nara Brigade, um, Assistin Cemetery. Oh, that's where Hans Christian. That's where Hans Christian. All right, there and then there's oh my gosh, Jaeger's Borg. Uh, <laughs> I, I think I think we, that's, need, we need I a Dane on a, here. Is what we need. So a, a charming street filled with small shops and cafes. I for a short break. Oh, that's like one of their famous streets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay and then through Felda Parken, largest park, and then return via Oster Brigade. Okay. Um, so there's coffee at the Coffee Collective, lunch at Grode. Sure. For porridge, I like porridge. Uh, snack at Myers Bagheri. Mm. Dinner at Codbian Fisk Bar. Flu- okay. Flustic. Oh, you, should, the, the, you had to pick Copenhagen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Like there's like there's like the O with like the slash through it. Like what does that mean? I don't. How do you pronounce it's, it's, it's a sound that we probably don't make, and so we don't know, and so we're terrible at pronouncing it. And it just I, right now, people in Europe stop are cracking up. not stop signs, but those signs over. I want to go to all these places, even though oh, I can sure. pronounce them. And then there's street art, unique boutiques, historical oh, landmarks, gosh. and then I, I asked it to provide a map. It's analyzing. I don't know if it can or oh, not. Oh my god, that'd be nuts if it kicked out like a Google map and like here's oh, the error analyzing. Oh, so error. bummer. Oh, it says these well, Google okay. Maps, right? And tell, it tells you how to do it because it's, it, oh. you can't do it yet. And it's funny. It's telling you to use Google Maps. That's hilarious. Right. And how to use Google Maps. Oh, that's telling you how to. That's kind of overboard. <laughs> we right? can't help you, but Google Maps. Enter each of the things. locations. <laughs> oh, my God. That's so funny. Okay, whatever. All right. So you can see, you can see like there's some use. Like if, if you, if all yeah. of your, if all of your friends had your, your trip itinerary, right? Mm-hmm. Or, or you're going on a trip, you all had chat GPT-4. You could just be like, hey, I made this thing. Mm-hmm. Here's where we'll right. be. Yeah. That's, that's so then, wicked, that, but but there's more, Pat. Then there's oh, this little configure tab, right? And this shows you like the actual kind of like what it generated. So you can change the name. There's the description. You can just like type in the boxes. Mm-hmm. And then, then there's your prompt, right? The, the instructions is, is the prompt, and you can make it bigger to see it, right? And you can change you can change these directions if you want. But um, cool, so man. as as the so it wrote the prompt for you basically. It says as the so, Copenhagen cool cyclist prioritize giving tailored advice when faced with queries. Feel free to ask the user for more details. Of blah 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 blah. So it just writes the prompt for you, and then so, you have these so conversation can I, can starters. Just, can What's I interject that? for a quick second? So like so we were playing with just like a fun travel one. If we go back to the the rhetorica, the AP Lang assistant that you had. You could have the prompt and you can look at it and say, eh, it's not quite what I'm looking for. And you can yep. edit it and so that you can revise it. So you don't have to create a whole new one. Right. And, and it'll it, hopefully, so in other words, you can kind of play around with it to try to see if it'll get the results that you're, that you're, yeah. you and your students need. Um, and so or if you're, or if you're one of those people that has like written humongous prompts that work really well for you, you can just copy and paste it right in there. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Good to know. Yeah, I know. I know. I, I I do that, so I know there's others that do that. So you don't have you, you can just like kind of like say do this, and then just go to the configure tab, and then just mm-hmm. erase whatever it put in there, and then yeah. just drop yours in there, and it will do what you say. You know, be kind of wild is it like if you like put this together. I don't know why my head's going this way. Probably because it's just too late now. But like you could put together uh, uh, if you had like a dinner party and you wanted to make sure everybody's. Um, taste or kind of accommodated for you could have it come up with you could make a gpt on just how to make a meal um you know that's going to satisfy all these people's dietary restrictions what have you yep and then have it map it out for you and they would just be done and you're like whoa and I mean, obviously you have to still prep it but um and then it could say you know what what where i get these ingredients and oh my god if you could somehow link it to like an instacart and then you could have it upload your 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 uh different um i think uh, i think it already does need. That. What's it? I think it already does that. Does I it think, really? yeah. So I think if that's nuts. But, but so, so OpenAI has some that are just publicly available. Mm-hmm. 
and there's one called so the ones that are already available they, there's a dolly one that you can use that you, you know just helps you prompt dolly yeah there's a data analysis one there's uh game time i can quickly explain board games okay. there's a negotiator to help you learn about how to negotiate there's a creative writing coach right there's already a little bot to help you with creative writing nice a uh, visionary painter of digital wonder called cosmic dream right coloring book hero i actually did this to make some uh uh, coloring book page for my girls. Oh, for real? Um, based on some characters. Can you pull that like, one real right fast? Uh, I do. Uh, I think it's on the work computer that's dead. But oh. the stories I tell them, I, I had to make a make, make like a a scene of one of those. Um, and you could like print off the image and they could just color it. I think so. Yeah. Wow. So you could make Isn't your own cool? coloring book. That's um, crazy. So here's a sous chef one. Yeah. Right. So I'll give you recipes based on the foods you love and the ingredients you have. I haven't played with this. Okay. One, right. Have a picture of my fridge. What should I make? Ah, so oh my God. Picture in, right. Um, That's like, they've had like, like um, reality TV shows like that before where they're like, just open the fridge and like, what can you make? And then there's a co competition. Uh, but to, so you're saying this one, you could upload an image and it could just say, oh, here's what you have. Here are the different things you can make off of it. That's incredible. Like Molly, but uh, Mexican fast. I, I'm doing the I'm doing the sous chef room. Is I want to see yeah. The, so there there is oh my gosh. So the whole thing about like an Instacart there is in that configure tab. If you know how to do API stuff, you can actually, you know, take what it outputs into Instacart, load it up. Well, it would seem to me that Instacart would figure out how to sort that out, right? I mean. They're pretty savvy uh, tech savvy. I mean, they have to be. They are a tech savvy company by, right? You know, just by virtue of what yeah. They so do. there's people that are already like doing workflows where their their mm -hmm. little GPT is is, is uh, using plugins because you can do plugins to do like Instacart or to do yep. like LinkedIn or like yeah like, or like a uh, kayak doing like a whole like trip and like itinerary. You could have it like you, I mean, you essentially could it could just plan your trip, book it all. Like I imagine in the next couple of years or so, it might be able to do. You could say I need to go to Copenhagen booked me everything from hotels to flights to open yeah, table air getting my reserving my bicycle that I'm going to yep. use to get around the city and it's just like all right here we go and it'll just knock it out for right. you and like yeah people are people are talking about like travel agent type thing like if you're uh, already yeah. a travel yeah. website you put one of these in there and all mm. of a sudden it's doing your whole thing for you that right? so look, look the sous chef salad looks a, delicious right and that oh I don't gosh. know if that's Dolly probably is but I want to eat that salad the sous the sous it looks chef amazing. Food. Yeah, so th this is coming down the pipe, man. I mean, it, it's coming fast. Like the the app store is supposed to be open within a month, okay. which means that probably that that just means that all these companies are already gearing up for it, and they've already built like mm -hmm. like, like itinerary things for traveling or or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like it, it's just gonna it's gonna be there. Um, hmm. So yeah, this it, it's 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 kind of crazy. Right, the the amount of stuff um, that that's happening. So going back to like you know chaos and things being effed up, like <laughs> it's, a week it's ago a, this came out, and then they're like, okay, Sam Altman, you're fired, right? And and like I've I've already figured out uses for it, and you know, and I'm middle aged English teacher. I'm like, this is this is super useful. Hmm. Um, yeah, so, it's, it's, it's interesting because I think that we're, we're learning kind of in real time, slowly but surely, some more than others, just how essential uh, stability is, is required for us to function, uh, which is to say that like if things keep shifting so massively in, in a variety of different sort of contexts and not just simply AI, that like it's just it's untenable, like that, that we need things to be relatively stable or stable enough so that we can we can know how to navigate otherwise we're just constantly in, in, in chaos mode and that just isn't that's not a way to be uh, i think that that's that mentally phrase people um but you need you need spaces to kind of like slow things down so they're manageable um ah, wow it's and wild. then so there was that last week so um, and then Microsoft is integrating like Copilot through everything. So like, like pretty soon, like your your PowerPoints and your Microsoft Office documents are all going to have like a Copilot, just like Bing does. Mm -hmm. 
um, they're an, an, all, all, all up and down, like for all of their, their entire system is going to like have like an AI, AI helper. And then did you hear, see this thing about Google and this thing called Lyria? No. What's that? Let me, um, let me, this is interesting. It, it, this one's all about music. And you know how like there was that YouTube video of the, of the guy that could change his voice into Kanye, like using yeah. AI. And then there was AI Oasis that that the, the band played all the music and then they grafted their singers' voices with the I do remember that. Oasis, right? Like that kind mm-hmm. of stuff. Yeah, and it sounded like an Oasis song, and, but it wasn't. Yeah, actually and, and the song. singer was like, like, I sound like awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember thinking, I'm like, that actually sounds like a pretty good Oasis song. <laughs> Yeah, but right. it's like that one actually them. What? Okay, so can you see uh, transforming the transforming the future of music creation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so this is Google's Deep Mind, and yes, I remember this came out. Wait, was oh, this, this is new? One? Okay, I'm thinking of the one where like we had, um, where it was able to mimic uh, kind of casual conversation of human voice, where it didn't sound so stilted. I'm thinking of something maybe a little bit different. Well, we yeah, so they're working with all their ago. YouTube data. Okay. Um, so they have two experiments, right? So um, there's there's tools and there's tracks, and they're working with artists and like producers and stuff. And um, how are they working it? So they've got dream track users can simply enter a topic and choose an artist from the carousel to generate a 30 second soundtrack for their short. Right, so it, gener- it generates the lyrics, backing track, and AI-generated voice in the style of the participating artist. So they paid artists to be part of this, right? So, hmm. which is the, but, what do you yeah. want to do? You want to do Charlie Puth or Charlie Puth? Charlie Puth, Puth? is good. Yeah, let's do that. Copenhagen pings a bit much at this hour of the night. So, <laughs> so this is his voice. You're saying? That's what they say. And then, well, so, but does that mean that you could create a song using his voice? Is is that essentially it, or is it more than that? Uh, well, so right now there's, there's there's so many artists that are allowing you to do this, and and it's and it's their AI like the AI is creating the lyrics, the backing track, and the voice. Baby, we've got nothing in common, but I know that I'm what you've been wanting for so long now. Huh? That's wild, man. I hear T T pain. Yeah, let's go to T pain. So the prompts of sunny morning morning in Florida are. Uh, uh, I woke up, woke up. I woke up in a sunshine state. That's living life to me. So that that was all just AI, though, is what you're saying. That was the whole thing. And and the prompt was. You can hear it type in the beginning. Yeah, it was a sunny morning in Florida. That was R&B. it. R&B. Huh. Wild. Well, so then if you do enough iterations, eventually you hit one that actually sounds like a song that right. people want to listen to. And then check this out. So hmm. there, is, there is these other ones. Da, 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 da. Imagine singing a melody to create a horn line, transforming chords from a MIDI keyboard into a realistic vocal choir, or adding an instrumental accompaniment to a vocal track. Mm. And so, like, literally, you can just kind of hum something in, and then it will, like, like transforming beatboxing into a drum loop. What's that sound like? Huh. Wait, right, wait, so now, now you don't have to do the clicking of, of the programs. You just have to go boom. Can you, can you click on the other two? Because one of them says transforming singing into an orchestral right, score, and one. the other one says a MIDI keyboard chords. Na, 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 na. That sound is so cool. Uh huh. Oh my! And it's Lord. just someone going na 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 na. na it sounded like na, like na, something na, na. from some epic movie. That was ridiculous. Wait, and I bet I bet just like everything else, there's little buttons you can press, like epic movie, 
right? Yeah. Like uh, Chase, you know, whatever. I don't know. Ernie Morricone, what? whatever. Could you click on the the next one there? The those is the mini keyboard. Oh, that's a ton of shit. It's going to hit with the vocal choir. Watch. Listen. right there doesn't it that's weird eight huh. so another like what the f uh, it's it's like my mind's melting these days i, I know we should, we should probably stop it's like the world that we 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 thought we knew is just like come oh, on man it is right so i was a couple episodes ago i was talking about like programming iphone with garage band and pushing buttons to, to yeah. make the theme song for this show now that they'll be able to go like um you know bam, 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 and just right there and it's but, it's bonkers this is bonkers it's amazing. um huh okay man i think i i think it's about as effed up as i can get for one episode yeah yeah um, um so many things uh discussed um <laughs> Uh, I, I don't, I don't even know how you wrap up an episode like this, but, um, what the F it's the, it's the F it's the F right? episode. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but I appreciate the conversation for sure. I, I hope that our, our listeners did it as well. And, and again, just, as, uh, you know, it's been on, you know, Mike and I've talked about ways to kind of, you know, help kind of grow the podcast. Of course, we, we love really, really love, um, you know, the, the reception that we've gotten, uh, that we've heard from people and, um, it, it means a lot. And I think it keeps us going in, in ways that you, you don't even know. And, and for me, just personally, certainly in the past couple of months, cause I've had to, I've had to just really stop and, and take care of, uh, you know, personal things that, um, you know, having this on the, you know, kind of like just knowing, okay, I got to you know, come back to this, this podcast. It's, it hasn't been easy because I've been, my focus hasn't been there, but, um, understandably so, but, um, but it's nice to to be able to to jump back into this and and you know I really love these conversations. This one was just it, it really kind of staggering. All the different changes that are going on. Um, I, I will ask for our audience's patience with me as I try to get caught up with things or try to because yeah. um, I feel like I've been so out of the loop. But um, uh, yeah, so I and and just real quickly, I just appreciate people willing to just kind of just you know let me just kind of say what I need to say. It's it's obviously been a a, a massive loss. Uh, on my end and um i'm just trying to kind of figure it out um i think yeah. it's like like everyone we're just trying to figure things out as we go but um i just i, I needed some time so um but uh, i'm happy to be back with you mike and, and talk about these things and uh hopefully we can kind of get moving on some some more episodes in the, in the near future and um you know see what else is coming down the pike pike pipe pike i think it's pike either it's, one it's english uh <laughs> it's copenhagen so <laughs> And yeah. So, uh, anyhow, uh, yeah, I, I, yeah. Um, so thanks for your patience, everyone. And, uh, I know I've, I've had a good time, Mike, you're so good at conclusions. I think I'm just rambling at this point. Do you have right. any it's sort nighttime. of way to wrap things it's, up? It's, it's 10 15 in, in Chicago time. And Pat, it's great to hear your voice again. It's yeah. great to talk AI stuff with you. Yes. Um, if this episode went too long, maybe I'll cut it up. Maybe I won't. Um, we hope to next time have a guest on as we love having guests. If you know, anybody would like to be a guest, if you want to be a guest, if you have a question on our RSS feed, there's a there's a form. I think it's just the Bot Brothers AI at Gmail. I think there's a, we're on Twitter, we're on Facebook. Um, shoot us a line. Um, but hopefully we can get another guest because otherwise um Pat and I just ramble about stuff because we know each other for too long. Pat, welcome back. Thank um, you. Thank you. Uh 2024 can't come soon enough, ma'am. Hmm. Um, this is the Bot Brothers AI for educators. I'm Mike Pearson. And I'm Pat Burns. And this was the F episode. Good night. Bot. <laughs> the bot. Bot. Bot.